the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. But God remembered no and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had gone down. And on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch, because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the first month of Noah's six hundred and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground. So they can multiply on the air and be fruitful and increase in number of it. So no one came out, together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground, and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on them. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done, as long as the earth is yours. Heat time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never see the truth. Hey, but I'm excited. I got a new project I want to try out. It for encouragement, for growth, and edification for all of us, those of who profess themselves to be Christians, is to let's read the entire Bible. One chapter at a time for the New Testament, one chapter at a time for the Old Testament, use the New Testament in the morning, and at uh, nighttime, use the Old Testament. And incorporate it as part of your prayer, meaning it just becomes a routine thing with your prayer life. So, what I'm going to do is by being an example, let's actually go ahead and do that as well. Use it on YouTube. I recommend you do uh, subscribe so you can be notified when the chapter that you need to read comes up and you can go and keep up with it. Subscribe to the channel. You go to the channel and catch up with the ones that you may have missed. But let's, let's get it one day at a time, you know. And what I like to do is I'm excited. I think it's going to be because... We really do need to read the Bible for ourselves. Everybody, and I encourage many of you to do that. 
The reason I'm doing this is because, like I said, it's title How to Read the Entire Bible, Read It One Day at a Time with Your Morning in Prayer, and use an audio book to help you read and pronounce some of those words, especially when you get into the Old Testament, I'm telling you something else. But also look at this right here. I put down the survey that was done. It was called How Much, it was called Life Wave Research Did It, How Much of Bible Have You Personally Read? And you can see 10% none, 13% only a few sentences, 30% several passages or stories, 50% at least half of it, 12% almost all of it, 11% uh, all of it, and 9% all of it more than once. And the reason I don't want you just to read the Bible, I want you to give it, meditate on it, and get that in your heart and your spirit and get revelation that God gives you. So that's why the intent is for you to read these scriptures because you guarantee you, you will grow in the things of God. And then you'll have to depend on other people to tell you something. And then when you go to church, sir, when the man said, let's turn to such and such chapter, you can say, this, I did that. <laughs> I read that chapter. And, and then you can get some more comments on that. So you start to understand what the man is trying to teach. But you keep it in content of those scriptures that they come in. Amen? Hey, I, I think you'll love it. I think I know you'll love it. I know you'll enjoy it because we got to change that stack that we just read. All right. So get ready. Go to the chapter this up for the day and don't forget to subscribe and I guarantee you we have be able to knock out the New Testament uh, I think in about seven months listen it's worth it so you can get to know your Bible and know who you are because what the scripture says who you are is more important than what people say that you are amen God bless you I'll see you and see you bye bye Hallelujah, praise the Lord.